Greetings of the day students. I am Dr. Sarika Zoshi, Assistant Professor at AI SSMS College of Hotel Management and Catering Technology. Under the series of Bridge Course Chemistry, the earlier sessions we have seen are what is matter, what are the properties of matter, what is the effect of heat on matter and evaporation, melting point as well as boiling point. Today's session under chemistry is based on two concepts, distillation and fermentation. Let us see them one by one. The objective of today's session will be to understand what is fermentation, how is fermentation related to preserving and preparation of food, certain additional benefits of fermentation, what is distillation and its applications. Let us first understand the concept of fermentation with the help of its history. Well, evidence says that fermented foods were consumed 7000 years ago in Babylon. Yes, that's right. This concept is very old which was followed by our ancestors. There is a specific study related to fermentation which is called as zymology. The scientists speculate that our ancestors possibly discovered fermentation by ancient and continued the use of this process out of preference or due to necessity. Of course, fermentation has its benefits or in terms of food, it has its nutritional value. So what is fermentation? Fermentation is a decay of material by using a special bacteria that results in the desirable product. You must be wondering how a decayed food or a product is then good for consumption. Well, that's exactly where there is a role of useful bacteria or microorganisms and they play a specific role in various food products which we shall see in the upcoming slides. Chemically or technically, fermentation is the biochemical conservation of sugars, of starches or of carbohydrates into alcohol and organic acids by various bacteria and enzymes. Though it sounds pretty technical, we shall see some simple examples or food items that we use in day-to-day -day life. Symbiotic relations with some forms of bacteria they need that is carbohydrates and give us the agent which is a preserving agent. A starter culture containing the preferred bacteria is introduced to the food which is to be fermented. The best example that can be quoted here is of the curd. I am sure you have observed how a curd has been prepared by the fermentation of milk by adding a starter culture to it. This can be done by adding a small sampling of the previous batch left into a new batch that is to be prepared. Continuing further in this topic, let us see the role of fermentation method for preparation of food. The first example comprises of the material cured in a brine solution. A brine solution comprises of salt, water and of course sometimes to add in the flavor certain spices and sugar is added. This gets naturally fermented and pickled. Anaerobic bacteria then converts carbohydrates and a pickle is formed. 
to define an anaerobic bacterial representation that is the role of oxygen in the process of fermentation. Preserves or foods the brine protects the vegetables from aerobic organisms. Pickle, bread are another examples of role of fermentation and the use of microorganisms or the bacteria in preparation of food. So what are the typical ingredients of a pickle? When your granny or parent make a pickle, they use excessive use of salt and sugar and any food product which is been dissolved in this solution comprising of a salt or a sugar then preserves the food from which the pickle has been made. Let us take an example of vegetables. Vegetables created with vinegar fresh pack or quick process methods are not naturally fermented. That is a temporary solution to preserve them in the form of a pickle. The acid in the vinegar preserves the food and imparts the flavor to the herbs with the use of herbs and spices. So the pH of the particular food is then brought down to as low as 3 as per the pH scale so that unnecessary microorganisms do not grow and it helps in the preservation of food. Vinegar though does not ferment the food but it is a product of fermentation. In the adjoining picture you can see a pickle bottle. If you read the ingredients on that you will come to know how this pickle has been formed and how it can stay at a room temperature or maintain its shelf life. There is a lot amount of preservatives as just mentioned salt or sugar or vinegar which is added to keep it intact or to maintain its shelf life. Another very common example that we use in our day to day life is bread. So what are the typical ingredients of a bread? Well for that we do need refined flour or all-purpose flour, salt, sugar and of course an yeast is added which acts as a helpful bacteria and helps in the process of fermentation. Bread is then raised or bread dough is then raised by the process of fermentation. Yeast, what is the role of the yeast in this process? So it eats the sugar and creates the carbohydrates into carbon dioxide gas due to which the bread dough rises doubling the amount of the food and it also produces alcohol that is burned off during the baking process of the bread. So that is how the role of fermentation is explained in the process of bread making. Going ahead, sometimes breads are also made with multipurpose flours to improve the nutritional content of the bread and so that they can be maintained at a lower temperature. Temperature has a very important role in the entire process of fermentation. So if the external environment or the temperature is high, the process of fermentation is faster. Whereas if the environmental temperature is low, let us say in case of winter, the process is slower. You can see a picture of a bread as in the given slide and the role of yeast as explained. So we can say that fermentation can be applied in our daily life in certain food products such as breads, pickles, also fermenting the flour, vinegar and 
in the process of pasteurization also in the process of gelatinization and certain enzymes that play an extremely important role in the whole process of fermentation as discussed in the objectives earlier there are multiple such benefits for the process of fermentation so the next point to be considered is how fermentation preserves the food that has been prepared so as mentioned earlier there is a desirable bacteria or there is a useful bacteria which causes less deterioration or a harm of the food by inhibiting the role of spoiling types of bacteria that means it retards or reduces the growth of harmful bacteria some fermentation processes also helps in lowering the ph of the food preventing harmful microorganisms to grow by making it acidic and preserving the food for a longer time the whole reason or the example of such kind of food with very low ph are the sour foods the earlier example of the pickle is also explains the same thing that the sourness or the addition of acid by with the help of vinegar or lime juice lowers the ph and maintains the pickle the fermentation process can be stopped by other means of preserving such as canning wherein in a particular can which is clean and kept ready for the food to be canned wherein the food is stored in a solution which acts as a suspension and the food particles are preserved certain other methods such as heating parboiling drying or freezing can be given here for the preservation of food heating another example is pasteurization and a extremely low temperature that is freezing almost below 32 degrees stops the fermentation process by slowing or retarding the growth of bacteria the process of pasteurization is applicable to milk which we buy from the market if you observe closely it is mentioned on the milk packet that it is pasteurized and safe for consumption here again the role of useful microorganisms comes into picture though the process of pasteurization involves application of heat at a very high temperature and then sudden cooling at a very low temperature this retards the growth of bacteria and increases the shelf life of the milk the low temperature of the food products and preserving them at extremely low temperature helps in preservation of certain food products such as meat and poultry products the causes of rotting disease illness and inedible foods can be removed or can be reduced with the help of this processes of preservation when the goods are present in a better condition they are definitely safe for the consumption by the customer certain additional benefits of fermentation can be seen by uh, for the process of aging of cheese in the process of wine also in the process of beer production cocoa beans which uh, were in the uh, we can enhance the flavor of the coffee and of course the example of milk which was recently shared now that you have understood the concept of fermentation with multiple examples 
I would also like to quote a few very common examples of fermentation which we see in the food products such as the batter of Indian, uh, South Indian uh, snacks which is idli, dosa, dhokla wherein the batter is fermented overnight and because of the fermentant process the volume of the batter increases and it is also healthy and nutritious to consume. So I am sure you will enjoy such fermented products and also know or understand or become aware of the benefits of fermented products. Let us now move on to another concept that we are going to study in today's session which is distillation. I am sure students that this process or word was introduced to you during your school time in your chemistry labs. So let us have a little bit knowledge about distillation and its application. So the further session will be based on the definition of distillation, its application and introduction to certain types of distillation processes. By definition, distillation is an unit operation which involves separation of vaporizable component from a multi-component system and subsequent condensation of vapors. In simple terms, it is also removing the impurities from the two liquids. Distillation is defined as separation of the components of a liquid mixture by a process which involves vaporization and subsequent condensation at another place. As learnt in earlier videos, vaporization is turning of liquid into a gaseous state whereas condensation happens when it is cooling down and formation of the water droplets from the gaseous state to a liquid state. As given in the figure, you can see a process of distillation wherein on the left hand side and heat is applied to a liquid which is in the container. The right temperature is maintained and observed with the help of thermometer. The same is then passes through a tube wherein the liquid gets condensed that means it's cooled down and in the another flask which is on the right hand side it is getting gathered or it is getting collected which is the receiver. So the process of condensation will be easily understood from the given diagram. Now let us have a look at the application of distillation. Separation of volatile oils from the club. So you must have heard about club oil. The process can be done with the help of distillation. Separation of drugs obtained from plant sources and certain animal sources such as vitamin A which can be obtained from fish liver oil. Another example is purification of organic solvents that is absolute alcohol, 100% of alcohol. A few more examples to quote here wherein the process of distillation can be applied for purification of drugs obtained from chemical processes. Quality control methods also imply distillation method wherein the alcohol content is monitored. A very common example is refining of the petroleum products where the distillation process is used. Also in the recovery of certain solvents or in the process of synthesis the distillation process can be observed. Now we are at the end of this particular session but before that I would like to just introduce you 
to the types of distillation process some of them are flash distillation simple distillation steam distillation and so on i hope with today's session the concept of fermentation and distillation is understood by you thank you for watching have a good day